This next question comes from Jason in New Jersey. As both a Berkshire and Occidental shareholder, I was encouraged to see your investment in the company. But with passing weeks, it became evident that your investment facilitated Ox uh, Occidental management's ability to avoid a shareholder vote on the Anadarko acquisition, a very shareholder unfriendly outcome. This deal proved to be irresponsible and expensive from an Oxy perspective and ultimately very value destructive for Oxy shareholders. In my view, it also permanently hurt Berkshire's reputation in the marketplace. Please comment on this unfortunate outcome and tell me why Oxy shareholders and other market observers shouldn't feel this way. Well, uh, we said right from the beginning, although we didn't certainly expect to agree to it, uh, of what's happened. We, we said essentially when you buy into an oil a, a huge oil production company, uh, you know, how it works out is going to depend on the price of oil to a great extent. It, it's not going to be your geological home runs or 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 super mistakes or anything like that. It's 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 it, it is a it is a investment that depends on the price of oil and you know the I. When oil goes to minus thirty-seven dollars, <laughs> it's happened the other day for, for I guess it was the May contract. Uh, you know that's off the chart, and and if you, if you own oil, you should only own oil uh, if you expect these prices uh, to go up significantly. I don't know whether they'll go up significantly or not. We're in the we're in the transaction. Our commitment uh, was made. On a Sunday, uh, when the management of Anadarko favored Chevron, and Chevron had a breakup fee of a billion dollars, and and Occidental people have been working on it for several years, uh, and it was attractive at oil prices that then prevailed, and. It doesn't work, obviously. Uh, it doesn't work at twenty dollars a barrel. It certainly doesn't work at minus thirty-seven dollars a barrel. But it doesn't work at twenty dollars a barrel. And everything the oil companies have been doing, whether it's Exxon or Occidental or anybody else, it doesn't work uh, at these oil prices. That's why oil production is going to go down a lot uh, uh, in the next few years because it does not pay to drill. Now, that's happened at other times in the past. Uh, but the situation is, you know, you don't know where you're going, going to store the incremental barrel of oil, and oil demand is down dramatically, and and for a while the Russians and the Saudis were trying to outdo each other in how much oil they could produce. And when you've got too much in storage, it doesn't work its way off that very fast. Now, you will have production of oil go down in the United States significantly. It does not pay to drill in all kinds of formations that it, it paid before, and it doesn't pay it doesn't pay to have paid the price that oil was trading at in the ground a year or two ago. And uh, and to that extent, if you're an oxy shareholder, you know, you've or any shareholder in any oil producing company, uh, you join me in having made a mistake so far in terms of of where oil prices uh, went, and who knows where they go in the future. Let me follow up with this one, then. This one comes in from Manish Bal, who says, is there a risk of permanent loss of capital in the oil equity investment? Well, there certainly is. You know, there's no question. If, if oil stays at these prices, there's going to be a lot of money a whole lot of money and it'll extend to bank loans and uh, it'll affect the banking industry to some degree. Not that it doesn't, doesn't destroy them or anything, but it, there's a lot of money that's been invested that was not invested based on a $17 or $20 or $25 price for, for WTI, West Texas Intermediate Oil. And, uh, uh, but you can do the same thing in copper you can do the same thing in, lot, in some of the things we manufacture. I mean, it. it but with commodities, it's particularly dramatic. And uh, you know, farmers have been getting lousy prices, but to some extent, the government subsidizes them. I'm all for it. Actually, uh, uh, I'm. 
Uh, but if you're an oil producer, you take your chances on future prices, unless you want to sell a lot of futures forward. Oxy actually did sell 300,000 barrels a day uh, of uh, puts, in effect, that, uh, or they, they, they bought puts, but and sold uh, calls, in effect, to match it. And they were protected on a $10 for a layer of $10 uh, a barrel on 300,000 barrels a day. Uh, but you're really buying, when you buy oil, you're betting on oil prices over time and, and uh, over a long time. Uh, and oil prices, uh, there's, there's risk. And, and the risk is being realized by oil producers as we speak. Uh, there will be, if these prices prevail, there will be a lot of bad loans and energy loans and, and if, or, or bad debts and energy loans. And if there are bad debts and energy loans, you can imagine what happens to the equity holders. So yes, there's risk.